Hello, my name is Tim Gardner, and I am the senior author of the manuscript Early Fluid Resuscitation and Reduced Morbidity in Acute Pancreatitis, which will soon be published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. On behalf of myself and my co-authors, I would like to thank GI and Hepatology News for allowing us this forum to present our work. As many of you know, acute pancreatitis is a devastating disease responsible for over 300,000 hospitalizations annually in the United States. Currently, about 20% of patients have severe disease with organ failure, and 5% of all patients with acute pancreatitis die. Despite its enormous disease burden, there is no effective pharmacologic treatment for acute pancreatitis. Therapy consists of supportive care with IV fluid resuscitation, often ICU care, nutritional support, and pain control being the mainstays of treatment. Despite its established use in the treatment of acute pancreatitis, several questions remain about IV fluids as a therapeutic agent in this disease. For example, what is the optimal type of IV fluid? What is the optimal volume? And what is the optimal timing of resuscitation? In addition, despite its widespread use, little is really known about the impact of IV fluids on the morbidity of this disease. The purpose of our study, therefore, was to evaluate the association between early fluid resuscitation and important outcomes in patients admitted with acute pancreatitis. We performed a retrospective chart review of all patients admitted to Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, a tertiary academic care center in Lebanon, New Hampshire, from 1985 to 2009, with an admitting diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. No patients who had been transferred to our center were included. We then evaluated each patient's charts for important clinical outcomes and interventions such as death, length of hospital stay, the presence of the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, and whether or not patients developed organ failure. We then very meticulously recorded the amount of IV fluids given to each patient from the moment they came to the emergency room until 72 hours into their hospitalization. We then categorized the patients into two groups. Those who received greater than one-third of their initial 72-hour fluid volumes in the first 24 hours were termed the early resuscitation group. Those who received less than one-third of their initial 72-hour fluid volume in the first 24 hours were termed the late resuscitation group. These groups were then compared to see whether there was a difference in important clinical outcomes. What we found was that the two groups were very similar at baseline, with no significant differences. As expected, the patients in the late resuscitation group received more total IV fluid volume in the first 72 hours than did the early resuscitation group. However, patients in the early resuscitation group had less instance of the systemic inflammatory response syndrome at 24, 48, and 72 hours, as well as less organ failure at 72 hours, shorter length of stay, and a lower ICU requirement. Mortality was similar between groups although we suspect this is because of type 2 error, i.e. there weren't many patients in either group that died. What was also interesting was that we found these effects only in patients with mild or interstitial disease at admission. In patients with severe disease, early fluid resuscitation did not appear to make any meaningful difference in clinical outcome, suggesting that once the disease is severe, its course cannot be reversed by fluid resuscitation alone. This drives home the point that it is essential to hydrate early and aggressively in this disease. In conclusion, we found that early, aggressive IV fluid resuscitation was associated with lower rates of the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, organ failure, shorter hospitalization, and fewer ICU admissions. These findings were more pronounced in patients with interstitial disease compared to severe disease. Although these results are based on retrospective data, they suggest that early fluid resuscitation should be standard of care in this disease. However, definitive recommendations in regard to the type of fluid or amount of fluid cannot be made until prospective, randomized study is performed. On behalf of my co-authors, I would like to thank the AGA and GI and Hepatology News for allowing us to present our data to you. Thank you for your attention.